In the beginning of the lesson, you'll want to show your students some images of the classic Greek vases. You can either bring it in some um, images that you've printed out or make a PowerPoint slideshow on your computer or bring in some books that show Greek art and Greek civilization. So the students have a good idea about what a mirror image is by looking at these vases first. And then they also have a good idea about the type of designs and colors that the Greeks used when they made these. You can also talk about why were the colors so limited? Why was it just these browns and tans and blacks? Um, and of course it's because that's what was available to them. The things that they found in the earth and were earth toned, were neutrals. So we're going to also be using a limited color palette just like the ancient Greeks would have used. So once the students have a good idea about the type of vases that they're going to be replicating, you can start working on your mirror image drawing as a class. Each student will have a paper like this, a paper with the vase on the left and the blank side on the right, and you'll have the same thing up on your board so that as a group you guys can discuss the lines that you see and go through it step by step, um, helping students along the way as they need that. When we begin this drawing, we're first going to do the first line, replicating this one here in the center. If we don't do this one first, um, it will get kind of lost and get kind of wonky. So let's start here at this center one and study what it does. We see that it goes out a little bit to towards the side of the paper, goes out, comes down straight, and then it slightly curves out again here near the bottom of the line. So it's not a completely straight line. It kind of does lots of different little things as we follow it. You can also have the students take their finger and begin to just drag it along the line and feel what it does. And if you feel what happened on the left, then you can do the same thing and make this same feeling happen, but as a mirror image on the right. So after I study it or feel it, I'm now going to try and replicate it with my pencil over on this side. So I'm going to see that it slightly goes out, that it pulls down, and it begins to flare out there. I want this line to exactly land at the same height of this line, so I can always double check it by starting here with my finger, pulling my finger across and seeing if it lands at the same height on this side, so we can test and double check as we go. What's the next line that they'd like to do? I'm guessing it would probably be this top section over here. It's kind of this long sideways U shape, so we can look at it or we can feel it and see that it goes out long, it curves around, and then goes back. But we need to figure out where do these lines begin and end so they're in the right place. It does not start at the top. It's going to start down where it's curved down and met right there. So one way is just to look at it and study where it begins. Another way is to use our finger to drag from here to here and make a little mark. However your students like to do that. I can do the same thing here. I can say that it lands right here, which would be right there. Now I can go and look at it again and say, all right, I'm going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction on that side. I would say that from the center, it's almost halfway from the center to the edge of the paper. It lands right about there. So over on this side, I would say it lands right about there. So now I can go ahead and do the reflected image of that shape way over there. What's the next thing they would like to do? Maybe let's do the neck of it here. Starts a little bit over from the side. So I'm going to go to the side and go a little bit over. And it kind of comes straight down, maybe in just a little bit towards the center. And how do we know where to stop our line? We're going to go, but where do we stop? When it hits the same height or level as that one. And again, I'll double check where it goes right there. What kind of line is next? I'll do the straight line here that goes across. And there we go. We have the neck of the bottle or the vase. Now things are going to get a little bit more complicated. So it's really important to not only study with our eyes, but use our hands to measure and place things and make sure that we're going slowly as we start doing this section by section. Let's do the next one where we're going to land right here. So we're going to figure out how far out it goes and um, what it does between point A and point B. So first I'm going to line up my next mark and say it starts 
here and it will probably be about right there. So I know that between here and here is going to be the next line I do. But what does my line do? What kind of line is it? It's a curved line that goes kind of down, out, and then plops down at my point B. So go down a little bit, out, and kind of plop down there. My next line is the little handle on the side. Does it exactly connect to the point B I just landed at? It's gonna go past it a little bit. So we will start our next mark more towards the interior of the vase. Go out, curve up, over, down, like that. So it's important to think about where things line up and where they begin. We don't wanna begin here, we wanna begin in a little bit. Curve up, go to the same height as the other one on the other side, and curve down. All right, we can also double check the height. If this one is this height, we'll drag our finger across. Is it about the same? Good, if not, we have an eraser. We can always pull across, make a mark, and then make sure that our lines are touching those so that it is a more accurate mirror image. Now this next line is gonna line up with the line above it there. So it would line up as if the curve were going behind the shape we just did. And then what does it do? Comes curves in towards the center of our paper. Way, way, way in. How far in? Oh, about right here in the center of this neck area here. All right, let's figure that out. If I go from the center down, whoop, it'll land right about there. So you can see that this is going to be a very long line from this point all the way down to the point I just found. We can also feel it with our hand. Let's feel that it goes down and then it goes in towards that. We'll try and replicate that with our pencil now. So I'm gonna do the same feeling. Whoops, it goes down, begins to curve in and land there. Now we're going to do this stand or the foot of this vase. It has lots of different components. So even though it looks complicated and there's lots of different lines, we're gonna just go line by line. And in that way, right, we can do it. If we just go section by section, we'll eventually get the full picture. Let's begin at this um, point that we just landed at and figure out what we do next. Let's do a straight line in and connect to what we have over there. And then now let's figure out what happens over here. This line curves out. So this one will also go out, but towards the other side. Curve out. And then we'll just start again with the next line. This one goes out straight and curves down. So I can go out straight and curve down towards the other side. Same thing, goes out straight and curves down. But it's similar, but not the same. This one is larger and further out towards the edge of the paper. So I have to make sure that I'm looking at how does this size relate to this size? We know that's gonna be larger. So I'll go out and curve down. And then our last line is simply gonna connect this corner in. So I'll go from the corner in and line that up. So now we have the vase completed and obviously they can go and clean up some things. And for example, this line is a little funny, so I would clean that up with my eraser, even feel it again and try and do it more correctly again on this side. So once they have the good solid foundational drawing, that's as accurate as they can do, um, you're going around and helping them obviously as they need it. Um, but once this is complete, then you can do a few lines across the middle of the vase so the students can begin adding their designs. So I'm gonna do two lines across. I'm going to slightly curve mine and that's going to make the vase look a little bit curved, a little bit more three-dimensional. And now I can start adding de designs in the different places. So I can go into individual handles or rims and add some things in there. I can also do designs along the top section and of course um, the bottom section 
wherever you want to go. The more the students are looking at the images or the books, they're going to get lots of good ideas beyond just the Greek pattern paper that you have in the lesson plan. And a lot of times on the vases, they had images of um, people doing things or of animals, of mythological stories happening here in the middle of these decorative sections. So if the students wanted to, they can come up with a scene and begin to draw either people doing things or you know, a scene of animals, whatever that looks like for them and have fun with creating that in the center. When they begin to color it in, make sure that they only have the colors that the Greeks would have used in their vases. So the blacks, the tans, reds, things like that. If you give them the whole rainbow of colors, you're gonna get pink and blue vases, but we wanna stay as traditional as we can and work within those earth tones.